Hi, this is Jan Vermeulen from MyBroadband.co.za, and I'm doing a video review of the HTC Sensation for Let's Talk Network. Now, the HTC Sensation is HTC's Superphone contender. This is supposed to be their competitor to the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S2. The first thing that you notice if you compare this to the Galaxy S2 is that it, it's heavier in your hand. It feels a little more substantial. Uh, some folks prefer the light weight of the Galaxy S2, but for those who, who like to feel a little weight in their pocket when they're carrying around their phone, that might be something to consider. The Sensations just hit South Africa, and it's going to be a start becoming available on contracts uh, soon. Quickly take a look at, uh, at the hardware. The first thing that you're going to notice is that the, the Sensation has a, has a large screen. This is 4.3 inches in the diagonal, and it's, it runs at a, what they call a QHD resolution. So that's a quarter HD resolution, which is um, getting right up there with Apple's Retina resolution. Um, whereas most smartphones run at 800 by 480, this runs at a resolution of 960 rather than 800. So that's, uh, that's a fairly impressive spec. Of course, it, it all depends on how it looks in the end, but we'll get to that a bit later. On the side, you've got your standard volume rocker on the left. It's a little difficult to press. So it doesn't rock quite as easily as, as one would think of a volume rocker, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you don't necessarily want it to, to trigger easily. Then something that's fairly strange for an HTC device is the charging connector and the USB connector on the side rather than on the bottom. And the reason for that is that your, your case release is on the bottom now. I'm not sure that I like the charger on the side, um, but it hasn't got in the way uh, when, when trying to do something. If you've plugged in your cable and you're doing something like playing a game or texting or whatever the case might be, then it's not really that uncomfortable in this position, which, is, which I was pleased to find out. Um, you can even have it the other way around, and, uh, and it also doesn't get in the way there, whichever is most comfortable for you at the end of the day. On the top, you've got your fairly standard uh, HTC Fair in terms of your, your power button. This is how you, you unlock an HTC phone as you push the power button, and obviously how you turn it on and off, and your combined microphone and speaker jack over there. Nothing on the right-hand side of the device. On the back, you've got an 8-megapixel camera, with dual LED flash, and uh, we've did a little. We've done a little bit of testing, uh, you know, taking some photos in low light conditions, but um, it, it just hasn't performed quite as well as the, the Galaxy S2 has. On the front, you've got a you've got a front side camera, and uh, that's for obviously video calling that sort of thing. That's just VGA resolution, and uh, you don't really want more than that when you stream off of uh, an expensive South African 3G connection. Now, I wanted to show you probably some of the most powerful, as Anantec put it, um, this is, isn't a quote I'm coming up with myself, they call this the most powerful design language of an HTC phone yet. And um, that's because the device is actually in a solid enclosure. So it doesn't pop off a back cover, you take the whole phone out of a case. And that's, that's how it looks. So it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting design and uh, very different from, from the normal fare. And uh, what you'll see when you open your sensation for the first time is obviously a spot to put the battery, and uh, this one's shipped with a battery already in place, you just had to remove the plastic. And an eight meg, uh, eight meg, yeah, maybe if this were 1996, eight gig um, SD card. So um, they do give you some, some external storage to go with your device, but that is necessary as the internal storage available to use only a gig. And, uh, and that is a little disappointing when we see most of the new super phones coming out with 16 gigs of storage at least. Um, so uh, that was an interesting design choice by, by HTC to still have the, the old one gig of storage that we saw on the, on the Nexus uh, 1 now that the hardware is done and dusted, let's take a look at the software. So those that have used the new HTC Sense, um, this isn't going to be uh, anything new. They, they would have seen the, the ring unlocker and, uh, and even, and even the, the lock screen icons. So with the lock screen icons, you, you can access anything, uh, anything listed here um, by just dragging it into the ring. So I'm not going to go into my messages, but you can drag the messages in there or your mail or the camera. So it's not quite as cool as having a, a dedicated camera button to launch the camera, but it's almost as good. So let's take a look at the mail then. So from the lock screen, drag it into the circle, and there you're in your mail app. 
And for those who haven't looked at HTC's new default apps that, that ship with its phones, uh, this, this is actually quite interesting to, to look at. Um, what they've done is they've, they've changed up the, the default mail a little bit. So you've got your, you've got your headline, um, or, or rather the person that the, the message is from. You've got the, the subject of the email, and then you've got a little bit of an abstract so you can see what that person was trying to tell you, as well as the obvious timestamps and stuff. Then along the side, you've got selectors. So you can multi-select messages, mark them as read, delete them, or move them to a, a different folder on your phone. So there's, uh, there's, there's a lot to be discovered in the new way that they're doing things. So moving on from the mail app, we've got your normal Android home screen setup and your normal HTC Sense thing that where they, they let you zoom in and out of home screens and it looks as slick as ever. This is something very few Android manufacturers have managed to get right with the, the stock UIs on their phones. Um, obviously, you can, get, you can do this with third parties. And what HTC have done is they've added some, some new stuff to your notification area. So here you've got your, your recently run your recently run apps, you've got your above your normal notifications, then you can go into quick settings. So from here, uh, normally you would have things like this, you know, being able to toggle your Wi-Fi, your mobile network, um, whatever the case might be, over here where the recently run apps are. So this is definitely an interesting design decision by HTC. You switch to uh, a tab with with the settings on it, uh, a lot like my UI, but with much fewer options. So you know, I still find that I have to have a separate screen for some widgets for stuff that I use often. So sometimes I'm lying in bed and I don't want my phone to auto-rotate, so then I can switch it off right there from the widget. Now, fortunately, HTC do ship these widgets with its user interface. So that is encouraging, at least, because a lot of manufacturers don't offer you th these kinds of widgets with the standard experience. The HTC Sensation ships with Android 2.3.3, that's Android Gingerbread, and uh, one version under the most current version of Google's o mobile operating system. Looking at the, the overall performance of the device, in terms of battery life, the device performs as well as you can expect from a high-end smartphone. You're going to get about a day's use out of this. One thing that really impressed me is that HTC have decided to, to do what Apple does with its uh, diamond plug connectors and that's that it's a really really compact charger with a USB connector on the top so that makes it really easy to pack up and to, to carry around in general I really like the HTC sensation it's more than met my expectations to earn the qualifier super phone for once we're looking at an HTC phone that doesn't have it, an atrocious camera. The, the photos don't all come out grainy in low light. So in low light, it performs well, maybe not quite as well as contenders like the, the Galaxy S2 um, or even Sony Ericsson's phones. But it, performs, it outperforms them in other areas. One area that was also a little bit disappointing is that the HTC sensation feels a little bit sluggish. So it, sometimes it doesn't respond as quickly. Sometimes it just locks up on touches. So it doesn't swipe properly. When you tap on something, it doesn't select it the first time. Little things like that can really ruin the overall user experience. Another thing that irks me, and maybe just me, is that you've got all this extra screen real estate thanks to the QHD screen. So remember, you've got 960 pixels across this way. But now you've got all these extra gaps in between widgets, so it really looks like when you drop a widget, for instance, if you click and drag this and you want to and drop it there, it looks like it should be going over there somewhere. It just doesn't feel right that it snaps all the way down there. And that is something I feel could have been addressed by just adding another row to the launcher screens. One of the third-party UI apps that does this really well is Launcher Pro. They, in fact, allow you to customize how many how many rows and columns you have on each home screen. All in all though, I wouldn't be disappointed if I spent money on this device. If you're in the market for a super phone, something that's gonna cost you a little bit more money, maybe be a little bit more expensive contract, and, uh, and you're a fan of HTC, HTC Sense, um, or just, uh, just the HTC design in general, this is definitely something worth considering.